Good evening. I'm Michael Widmer, uh, Belmont Town moderator. We have a quorum, and I'd like to uh, welcome all of you, town meeting members, and anyone else viewing to the special town meeting of June 26, 2024, for the town of Belmont. We'll begin this meeting as we do all with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now, a um, few preliminary remarks. First, uh, as is the practice, we need to admit people to the floor. So the town administrator, department heads and staff, town clerk staff, town council, George Hall, the warrant committee, the planning board, the board of assessors, uh, Jack Dolly of Northland, Steve Ketter representing McLean. Any other individuals who need to be admitted to the floor? Raise your hand. Don't see any. A brief overview, and then I'll turn it to uh, over to Ellen to explain specifics of tonight. We, as you know, town meeting members, we have just one article, uh, which we will get to shortly. Uh, first, however, as state statute requires, we will need to vote on the uh, decision to have a virtual meeting. So that's part of the state statute. Um, I'll describe uh, the process on the Article 2, the traffic mitigation uh, article, when we get to it shortly. I want to say a special thanks to the town clerk's office, the town, the town administrator's office and staff. Um, this has been uh, a huge effort to pull this together. Uh, and so kudos to them for putting in all these hours. Uh, and finally, uh, tonight, if there are some hiccups, please be patient. Uh, we put in place a number of options if they're problems, but uh, stay with us and we'll work through it together. So thank you for that. And now let me turn it over to uh, our town clerk for the return of the warrant and instructions about tonight. Thank you, Mike. Um, pursuant to the warrant for the special town meeting to be held at 7 p.m. on June 26, 2024, I, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, town clerk, do hereby certify that I gave notice of said meeting by posting an attested copy of the warrant and the moderator letter to the select board requesting the town meeting be held by remote participation on the town clerk's official bulletin board here at town hall, on the town website, and at least five other places in town, 14 days before the date of this meeting, all in accordance with chapter 39, section 10 of the general laws and chapter 30-110A of the general bylaws of the town of Belmont and chapter 22 of the Massachusetts Acts of 22 as amended. Furthermore, I do hereby certify that I gave notice of the special town meeting of, Jan of June 26, 2024 by causing a copy of the warrant and the moderator letter to the select board requesting the town meeting be held by remote participation to be sent to town meeting members at least 14 days before the date of this meeting and by causing copies of the warrant to be made available at the public, <clears throat> excuse me, website and the town clerk's office, all in accordance with chapter 30-110B of the general bylaws of the town of Belmont and the representative town meeting acts of 1926 as amended. Mr. Moderator, may I? Okay. Good evening, everyone. For the record, it's important that I provide an overview of the technology that we will be using for tonight's remote access town meeting. And uh, I thank Mike for his uh, graciousness, but there are many more people other than just those folks in the town clerk's office and the town administrator's office uh, who 
help us pull all of this together, and we are very grateful for their assistance and expertise. Two types of technology will be in use tonight, the Zoom webinar for viewing, speaking, broadcasting, and presenting information, and Point Solutions, the voting app, forecasting our electronic votes. Town meeting members, presenters, and some town employees are the only people who will be in the Zoom webinar tonight. The webinar is broadcast live by Belmont Media, and again, we are grateful for their partnership. Town meeting members should refer to the instructions provided in my detailed email that was sent to town meeting members Monday, June 24 at 6.37 p.m. It contains the session ID for voting and the Zoom link to join tonight's Zoom webinar and all other information that's required in order to participate and vote tonight. Town meeting members who wish to be recognized to speak will be called upon by the moderator in the order that they raise their Zoom hands and those who wish to may share video as well as audio once they are recognized. For voting, we use Point Solutions, the electronic voting app provided by our vendor, Echo 360. Every town meeting member who has created a Point Solutions account will be able to securely cast their vote. The username is an individual email address currently on file in the town clerk office and a personal password that allows them to vote on a motion and have that vote attributed to their name for the roll call list. Whether they vote using a smartphone, a laptop, a tablet, or a desktop computer. A town meeting member who did not create a Point Solutions account will not be able to cast a vote at the town meeting and no emergency vote may be recorded for that person. In the event a town meeting member cannot get their individual Point Solutions account to record their vote on a motion, the town meeting member may vote, uh, sorry, phone the emergency vote team at the telephone numbers that I have provided in that email. Since we do not have a technology team on board tonight to assist with any technology issues, we have more people who are staffing those emergency vote lines, and we all need to be very patient as to um, the calls are answered and documents make their way up to me and the town moderator. When the moderator has moved on to the next motion, it will be too late to call in your emergency vote. So we do ask you to pay attention to the time and we will be watching the uh, Belmont media broadcast to make sure that we compensate for any delay. Once all the emergency votes have been received, I will then ask the moderator accept the emergency votes by name and vote, and he will declare the final vote on, vote on the motion. For those people who are watching the Zoom and participating with the Zoom who do not have a microphone on their computer, please feel free to use the Q&A feature, which is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen in the center. This is not a chat uh, for general conversation amongst town meeting members. This is a very pointed uh, question that a person who wants to be recognized by the moderator without a microphone may call um, our attention. The person should write their name and their exact question. A member of the Q&A team monitoring that will represent the town meeting member by raising their Zoom hand. When the moderator calls on that person, they will read exactly the text of the person's question or remark. And we do uh, allow you to have a follow-up question as per the standard um, town meeting rules. Finally, if there is a point of order that you would like to, uh, a town meeting member would like to call to the attention of the meeting, again, through the Q&A tool only, um, we don't want you to be bursting in with audio. So using the Q&A tool, you will just type the words point of order. And again, the Q&A team will be attentive to that and interrupt and get the moderator's attention. If there is already a point of order underway, we ask you to wait until the moderator has made his decision about how to handle it before you uh, start barraging us with more questions. I thank again all the people who work hard to make the remote town meeting possible. And of course, we all appreciate your patience tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, we now go to a testing of your devices voting. So uh, we ask you to vote and see, uh, make sure they're working. And as you know, you can see on the screen whether. Uh, your vote is registered.
Hi, everyone. Ellen O'Brien Cushman, the town clerk again. Um, I've been asked why there is a single uh, square that is blank. It's uh, on the voting grid. It is for a town meeting member who did not create a um, turning point or uh, point solutions account, and therefore no vote will ever be cast for that. But we are carrying that in the hope to, as the person would have created it today, but it didn't work out. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, should we now post the total here? So uh, the voting seems to have worked. If there are any problems, let us know. But why don't let's proceed to the um, first motion, which I mentioned a moment ago. And this the motion that, uh, as I will read it, moved. As the town meeting will meet and act on all matters on the warrant for the special town meeting, by means of the video and audio conferencing and voting technologies described in the moderator's June 6, 2024 letter to the select board posted with the warrant. So uh, this is required by state statute. If you agree, vote yes. If you don't, vote no. Or three, abstain. So go ahead. Pardon me, I forgot to unmute. The final vote is 193 in favor, one opposed, three abstain. So it obviously passes. And there are at least one emergency vote. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, um, we do have one emergency vote from Kristen Zecchi, Precinct 6, town meeting member who votes yes for the preliminary motion. Thank you. So the final vote on this motion for the record is 194 in favor, one opposed, three abstention. Thank you. Uh, now we move on. And tonight we're going to hear the uh, motions in the following order two and one, and there are really no reports under one. So uh, our business is solely on Article 2. And before we turn to the motion under Article 2, let me make a few comments. Uh, the process will be as follows. Roy Epstein, Select Board Chair, will read the motion, and then I'll get the votes of the Select Board and the Warrant Committee. We'll then have the presentation from Glenn Clancy explaining uh, what we are debating tonight. At that point, we turn, as we always do, to the amendment. And uh, Yolanta Eckert will read the amendment. We'll get a vote from the select board. And then Ms. Eckert will present her arguments for the amendment. And then, and that will be 10 minutes 
and then Roy Epstein will present his arguments, uh, select board's arguments against the amendment. That will also be 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to allow, and in fact, encourage a full debate on the main motion and the amendment uh, simultaneously. In other words, we won't just debate the amendment and then debate the main motion, because in fact, they're two sides of the same coin. The main motion says yes, and the uh, amendment effectively says no, let's wait. So um, town meeting members will be able to make the argument uh, for the main motion and against the amendment or against the main motion and for the amendment um, as we have our discussion. The issue of scope uh, is important and I'll certainly do my, my best to do that, administer that in a fair way. I've given a lot of thought to this. I've consulted with George Hall, our legal counsel. I want to emphasize that the focus tonight is on the modification of the traffic management agreement with McLean. This is a traffic issue, not a zoning issue. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, the various communications from all parties and social media that have circulated in advance of this discussion um, have had all manner of uh, uh, of arguments pro and con. Some are well within the scope tonight, and many of them are not. And I will, as I say, try to administer that fairly. One example of uh, something out of scope would be the traffic in Waverly Square. I mean, if someone wants to vote uh, against the main motion because of the traffic, that's his or her right. But we're not discussing the traffic in Waverly Square tonight as one example. Um, another example, which is a little more complicated, the whole question of zone four. So uh, asking what asking McLean's representative what McLean's intentions are on zone four and the possible traffic impact, that is within scope. However, it's not within scope to have a debate about alternatives for uh, zone four or criticizing what uh, McLean is proposing, that's simply out of scope. Generally, uh, I will allow questions for clarification for items that may be out of scope, but it's important for the individual and town meeting members to hear the answer to the question, though that would end any further discussion. Finally, as I say uh, always, let's uh, conduct ourselves in, civil, uh, in a civil way, respecting other points of view, no personal attacks. And remember, we have a three minute limit uh, and no one can speak a second time until everybody has spoken once. With that, we'll turn to the uh, main motion under Article 2. Mr. Epstein. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roy Epstein, Chair of the Select Board and Town Meeting Member for Precinct 6. Article 2 moved that the town ratify the vote by the Select Board at their June 26, 2024 meeting to modify the agreement with the Phase 2 development at McLean for traffic management. And how does the Select Board vote? The Select Board unanimously recommends favorable action. And the Warrant Committee, uh, Jeff Luvian. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jeff Luvian, Chair of the Warrant Committee. The Warrant Committee recommends uh, unanimous favorable action, a uh, vote of 14. The Warrant Committee did not have the opportunity to take up the amendment, though. Great. Thank you very much. So with that, I will turn to Glenn Clancy, uh, who has done an enormous amount of work on this issue. Uh, Mr. Clancy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Glenn Clancy, Town Engineer. Um, folks, I just want to point out that the presentation I'm about to give varies slightly from the presentation that was uh, sent to you all um, by the town clerk earlier. Um, I've actually removed some slides and I've tried to streamline it a little bit to make it a little more efficient. So I will find out, I guess, soon enough if I've achieved that goal. Um, so here we go. Uh, first slide, please. 
So folks, I thought we would begin by taking a look at the McLean Hospital parcel, uh, identifying uh, the zones that are in question. Uh, if you look at the map, I've, I've specifically called out zone three, zone four, and zone five. Those are the three zones that are relevant to the TMMA. Um, and so I just thought it would be helpful if we all saw it on a plan. Start with zone five, that is the area in white in the middle of the slide, that is the McLean Institutional District. All of the traffic in that zone uh, follows the red arrow that's to the left, goes out to Mill Street. But also like to point out that zone 1A, 1B, and zone two, which are the blue colored zones uh, immediately to the left of zone five, those are the residential zones. That traffic also uh, exits out to Mill Street. Uh, Zone three is the uh, yellower colored zone at the bottom of the slide. The traffic for zone three is accommodated by Olmstead Drive. The traffic pattern, as you can see by the red arrows, Olmstead Drive uh, basically skirts the perimeter of zone three. Zone four is a red colored zone uh, up to the right of zone three. Um, again, this particular zone follows the pattern in the red arrows, Olmstead Drive. Uh, following um, around the perimeter of Zone 3 out to Pleasant Street. Next slide, please. So folks, the 1999 Traffic Monitoring and Mitigation Agreement, we'll be referring to that as the TMMA. Um, two sections uh, in that TMMA. The first one addressed monitoring. The second one addressed mitigation. We'll talk about monitoring first. Uh, traffic volume limits were established for the three sub-districts that we just went over in the previous slide. The senior living zone three, uh, R&D district zone four, and the McLean Institutional District zone five. Each of those three had uh, traffic volume limits assigned to those uh, respective districts. You can see in the in the table, morning peak, afternoon peak, um, daily traffic were the three data points that were identified for traffic volume limits. Want to point out that the traffic from the McLean Institutional Subdistrict is not subject to monitoring, as long as the buildings and improvements within such subdistrict continue to be used exclusively for pardon me psychiatric hospital purposes. Now, this was written in 1999. It is 2024. As of this very moment, the previous 25 years up to this point, McLean Hospital has done nothing on their campus in their Zone 5 that has varied from the psychiatric hospital purpose. Uh, and as a result, the traffic volume limits that were identified for Zone 5 have not been enforced, have not been monitored because, because there's nothing on that campus that has triggered the need to monitor that traffic. Next slide, please. Uh, further talking about the monitoring program, there's there's sections in there that address recourse actions. And so essentially how this works is the owner of a zone three or a zone four within six months of receiving a building permit is required uh, to prepare a traffic demand management plan. Essentially that management plan is um, meant to address how the owner of that property and the occupants of that property are going to comport with the traffic volume limits that were identified on the previous slide. Uh, within, uh, I should say, once a development on zone three or zone four reaches 90% occupancy, the town engineer at that point can request monitoring. So the, the 1999 agreement doesn't specifically require monitoring. It just opens the door at that point for the town engineer to request that monitoring. Um, it's been suggested by some that um, the town could just simply say, we won't monitor. We, we won't enforce that. Um, I don't believe that it's that simple. I think that it, what would likely happen is that someone would reach out to the select board with a complaint about traffic from a zone three or a zone four. The select board at that point would then probably most likely direct the town engineer um, to do the monitoring as is required in the agreement. This is relevant because of what we'll talk about in a few minutes, which is the constraints that are placed on these developments and the reason why Zone 3 in particular is having such a difficult time getting their project funded. Um, under the scenario of the monitoring, if it's determined by the monitoring that there is an issue with traffic volume, the town at that point can impose a $10,000 fine. Um, in any subsequent uh, monitoring that is done that still comes back in violation, additional $2,500 could be, could be assigned or, or assessed from the property owner. 
Uh, the other piece of that sort of action that the town can take is that the town may restrict the use of a number of parking spaces in each zone until the violation is addressed. Again, this is a, this is a particularly relevant part of this agreement because in 1999, it was contemplated that an assisted living facility would be on zone three. That facility would, of course, have staff associated with service vehicles and other delivery vehicles, uh, along with residents that would be living at the facility. Uh, zone four contemplated to be an R&D facility, which would have workers and staff and, and other kind of trip generators associated with it. Um, it would have been reasonable, I suppose, uh, for the town to go on to either one of those properties and say, because you're violating the trip generation requirements in this agreement, we are going to block off a portion of your parking lot and your people can no longer drive and use those spots until you get your trip generation under control. It made sense in 99. It made sense in 99 for the uses that were being contemplated. Zone 3 was originally expected to be a 486-unit assisted living facility. The current proposal is for 150 units of residential development. And again, you can begin to see how awkward this particular item is in the TMMA because this, essentially, as written, the town would have the ability to go up to a residential neighborhood and start closing off driveway access from the residents who live there if they are not comporting with the uh, the limits that are established in the agreement. Um, I, I think you can begin to understand why someone investing in a development like that would, uh, would be troubled by something like that. Uh, slide, please. So let's... So let's talk about uh, the mitigation piece of uh, the TMMA. So the use, the use of the sites uh, and the monitoring of, of the traffic generation is in the monitoring section. The mitigation piece was another section in the TMMA. And this th three items, we're going to we're going to hit them all three. I'm going to take the first two first. Uh, McLean Hospital agrees to fund the design and construction of improvements at two intersections in the project vicinity at an estimated cost of $690,000. Two locations were identified as, regardless of what happens anywhere else, these two locations were identified as being in need of attention. Uh, location number one uh, it was McLean Hospital at Olmstead Drive. Uh, location number two, the intersection of Pleasant Street at Tapello Road. There were certain actions that were proposed at each one of these locations. The expectation was that McLean Hospital would fund the design and construction of these improvements. The estimated cost why that was relevant, I really don't know, um, because I can tell you that that was not a cap on McLean Hospital's contributions to this work. Um, it does not say that McLean is obligated up to that amount. All it says is that we estimate the cost of the construction to be, uh, in this case, a total of $690,000. We'll see, uh, in fact, what really happened here. Next slide, please going to do a deeper dive into each one of these locations. So the first one, Pleasant Street at McLean Driveway, which is Olmstead Drive, uh, the first requirement was to construct the drive itself, the road itself. Uh, in order to construct that road, and because of the topography of that land, uh, it was required that a retaining wall be, uh, be constructed first. The cost of that retaining wall was $1.6 million. Uh, the cost to actually build Olmstead Drive, we don't have that number. McLean Hospital paid a private contractor to do that work. Uh, the town was not involved in that project and so we don't have the number my guess is that 200,000 anyway um, at a minimum was the cost to construct Olmstead Drive um, at a left turn lane this was to be done out on Pleasant Street this work was complete um, McLean Hospital paid the town $128,500 to pay for design costs for improvements on Pleasant Street. Some of those improvements were at the intersection of Olmstead. Some were at the intersection of Trapello. For the purposes of trying to identify the costs associated with these two locations, I've split that 128.5 in half. So um, I'm attributing 64250 to the uh, design costs for the uh, left turn lane. The signalization, of course, was not done, uh, although $65,000 was paid to the town of Belmont for design of that signal. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that later on. So going back to the original agreement, the estimated cost for the items associated with location A was $375,000. In fact, McLean spent um, a minimum, at least $1.7 million. And again, that doesn't include the cost of Olmstead Drive. So that number likely pushes close to $2 million. Uh, slide, please. 
The second location, Pleasant Street at Trapello Road, uh, required action, extend right turn lane and extend right of way. These are two things that were required to be done on Pleasant Street between Olmstead and Trapello Road in order for the Pleasant Street right of way to be able to accommodate additional traffic uh, and to manage that traffic at the intersection of Trapello and Pleasant Street. Uh, again, there's the 64250 that I'm attributing to design costs. Um, the cost to widen Pleasant Street and extend that right of way was $496,000. Uh, McLean Hospital hired a private contractor to do that. At the time, Mass DOT was working on Pleasant Street under a TIP project. Um, their contractor actually came in with a higher number, and so the job was awarded to McLean's contractor, again, at the cost of $496,000. Uh, in addition, an additional $90,000 was submitted by McLean Hospital that the town used to pay MassDOT for additional work that was done in Pleasant Street as a result of this widening work that was required. Uh, install the signal that was completed, that was actually done by MassDOT um, under the Trapello Road corridor project, which was done sometime around 2015, 2016. So it's many years after uh, the right of way work for Pleasant Street was done, uh, the signalization of that intersection was completed under a MassDOT project. Uh, interconnecting signals, again, MassDOT uh, took care of that. Uh, Mill Street, Pleasant Street, Lexington Street, Star Market Driveway, that, that signal system is all interconnected and, and uh, functions as one uh, by design. Uh, Again, by the estimated cost in the document, the estimated cost of this was three uh, three hundred thirteen. Pardon me, three hundred fifteen thousand. Uh, in fact, McLean's contribution was six hundred fifty thousand two hundred. Slide, please. So the third element in the mitigation program was uh, items that were left at the town's discretion. So. McLean Hospital was to pay the town $310,000, and the town was to be able to use that at their discretion at certain locations that were identified. We'll, we'll show you that in a moment, but I want to explain why $310,000 became $110,000. Under the uh, memorandum of agreement that the town signed with McLean Hospital, there were several items that were addressed and recognized in that memorandum of agreement. For example, the creation and the protection of land as public uh, open space and publicly accessible private open space. The land that eventually became the Highland Meadow Cemetery, McLean Hospital gave that to the town. The Zone 6, which is the parcel that was used for affordable housing, is land that McLean gave to the town. Um, historic preservation of buildings um, on the McLean campus. These types of things were captured in that memorandum of agreement. There was also an item in there where the town had decided that instead of having 200,000 square feet of R&D on zone four, they wanted to lower that development potential down to 150,000 square feet. So the deal that was made was the town of Belmont would compensate McLean Hospital $2.2 million um, to buy, essentially buy 50,000 square feet worth of R&D space. 1.5 million of that was a straight payment by the town of Belmont. Uh, 2001 town meeting appropriated that money and that money was paid to town meeting. Uh, 500,000 of that was in the form of a credit. One of the items in the memorandum of agreement called for McLean Hospital to reimburse the town of Belmont $500,000 for the cost of consultants. That $500,000 burden to McLean was removed. So we've got 1.5 million. Um, 500,000, that gets us to 2 million. The remaining $200,000 in the $2.2 .2 million payment or, or compensation package, I guess, uh, with the town of McLean, that remaining $200,000 came from this item in the traffic uh, monitoring and mitigation agreement. So the 310,000 dropped to 110,000. Um, we have researched this payment, we, we being myself uh, or the town of Belmont and also McLean Hospital. Um, no one can find evidence that this 100 and ten thousand dollars was paid if you read the wording in the amended revised uh, proposed agreement that you are uh, considering this evening there's there's couching language in there because you know it was agreed that both sides should still make an effort to see if there's any evidence that this uh, money was paid and if it was then obviously McLean's obligation has been satisfied I can tell you that as of this evening no evidence has been found to suggest that that payment has been made and so we are going on the assumption that McLean McLean uh, owns the town $110,000 under this item. Slide, please. So a little 
deeper dive into what this item C involved. It, it, it identified a bunch of intersections. What I've done on this slide is I've highlighted and underlined intersections that were improved and upgraded, mostly by mass DOT TIP funded projects. The Trapella Road at Waverly Oaks Road intersection is actually due to be upgraded by the city of Waltham. Uh, I actually had a conversation with their city engineer uh, two or three weeks ago confirmed that in fact they are ready to do the upgrades in that location uh, the other intersections that are identified not highlighted not underlined there have been no improvements made to those locations um, again the cost of uh, estimated cost of this was one hundred and ten thousand. The, the payment from mclean hospital is pending one hundred and ten thousand dollars slide please so at this point what are we talking about well what you're looking at here on this slide is a depiction of the proposed development on Zone 3. This uh, particular plan was presented to the planning board for the site plan approval process that the developer went through uh, a couple of years ago. Just to kind of get your bearings here, that uh, the colored area in the middle is Zone 3. If you look up to the right of that, you'll see where Zone 4 is located. The McLean Institutional District is, is right above Zone 3. Zone two is the existing uh, residential uh, woodlands development that Northland Residential previously did. I think there are actually uh, uh, several town meeting members that live in zone two. You, so you can see the proximity of zone two to where zone three would be developed, literally across the road on Olmstead Drive. Um, lower slide to the left, zone six is the Waverly Woods development. That is our affordable housing development. Um, and then I've identified Olmstead Drive, Pleasant Street, and Trapello Road, so you all can get your bearings and see how that ties together. Um, why don't I just take this moment to stress that Zone 3 and Zone 4 have to utilize Olmstead Drive. There is nothing that allows them, whether it's in uh, a memorandum of agreement, whether it's in site plan approval, there's nothing that allows Zone 3 and Zone 4 to access the McLean District and utilize Mill Street uh, for traffic patterns. The same is true for McLean Hospital and the residential zones, Zones 1A, uh, 1A 1B, Zone 2. They have to use McLean Drive out to Mill Street. Uh, they are precluded from using Olmstead Drive uh, for their traffic uh, ingress and egress. Slide, please. So this slide, this is a little tough to read, and I apologize for that. I, I got this out of a slide deck that was presented by McLean Hospital back on March 2nd of 2020. Uh, this is depicting a proposal for development on Zone 4. In the middle of the slide, you can see a series of dark gray buildings. That is representing the Arlington School, which is currently an operation that exists on the campus um, of McLean Hospital. The proposal is to relocate that operation to Zone 4. And as I mentioned previously, the total square footage allowed for Zone 4 is 150,000 square feet. This proposal contemplates approximately 90,000 square feet for use by the Arlington School. And then the remaining 60,000 square feet would be used for uh, a research and development facility. Um, Again, this was presented originally back in March of 2020. McLean Hospital um, is interested in moving this project forward, and they will be appearing at the select board meeting this Friday um, to kind of re you know, restart the conversation here in advance of them applying to the planning board for site plan approval on Zone 4. Just want to mention that in defense of McLean Hospital, because I know the timing for some you know, may, may, may find this a little bit curious, but in McLean's defense, they have been trying to get before the select board for the last couple of months. Um, um, because of town meeting and because of all the articles and just the, just the overall workload of, of what was a very busy town meeting, as you all know, uh, there was really not a good agenda to slot them in on uh, until we got past town meeting. And then this, this Friday became the one that seemed to, uh, to make the most sense. They'll be here Friday morning to, uh, to present this presentation again. Uh, slide, please. So here we are in 2024. We are looking to amend the TMMA. Why is it necessary? Well, as we've said before, as I've already mentioned, the 1999 TMMA has become an impediment to development. Uh, though the developer of Zone 3 can abide by the 1999 restrictions, investors are reluctant to support the project. When the developer was before the planning board, the developer presented evidence, um, a traffic uh, demand management plan that showed that, yes, you know what, we can live under the caps that are in the 
pre-existing agreement. Uh, the problem is when it came time to get investors in the project, the investors looked at the wording in the monitoring section and said, it's great that you think you can live under these, but what this says is that if ever comes a time that you can't, you know, the worst case scenario is the town can come in and start taking parking spaces away from those residential uh, property owners. We're not comfortable with that. Um, and that is really what set the ball rolling on a conversation on how to, you know, how to address that concern so that investment and then ultimately development of zone three could move forward. Slide, please. How does the amended TMMA compare to the original? Well, the, uh, the $10,000 payment comes off the table for zones three and four. The traffic limits that were uh, existing uh, are eliminated for zones three and four. Remember, as I said, zone five, the McLean Institutional District, all those restrictions remain, the, the fine system, the ability to shut off parking, all of that remains. Uh, the caveat to that, of course, is McLean would have to change their, their mission up there and, and get away from being a psychiatric hospital use. That has not happened to date, and therefore, uh, it, these restrictions haven't become relevant for them. Um, requires an upgrade of the traffic signal at McLean Drive. So, so this amended TMMA specifically, uh, where the original agreement said McLean makes a $110,000 contribution that the town can use at its discretion, this amended uh, TMMA says specifically that that 110,000 is to be used on the signal at uh, McLean Drive and Mill Street. This has uh, been a location that has been identified by a number of people as being a trouble spot. The signals are quite old, and uh, you know I think we all feel that upgrading that signal system will help uh, better manage the traffic coming in and out of McLean Drive. Um, in addition. Uh, McLean has agreed to pay an additional $100,000, again, to be put towards that Mill Street signal. So where the original agreement was, was worth $100,000 uh, and, you know, with, with discretion to be spent anywhere, it's earmarked for Mill Street. And then an additional $100,000 is also uh, will also be paid by McLean Hospital. Everything else that's required under the TMMA from 1999 has either been satisfied or it remains a condition uh, of 2024. Uh, slide, please. So what happens if uh, if the, if we, uh, what, what does the town lose? Sorry, I'll just read my slide. What does the town lose if the 1999 TMMA is not amended and the zone three development cannot move forward? Well, again, this was a very collaborative effort. It, it was a, probably a five-year effort uh, between several entities within the town of Belmont to craft a zoning overlay that would be beneficial to the town as well as Northland Development, uh, who's looking to develop Zone 3. So in those conversations, agreements on affordable housing um, were, were uh, were developed, uh, age-restricted housing units were agreed upon, um, the housing, the affordable housing component gives the town safe harbor from 40B developments for two years by virtue of our housing production plan. Um, we, we have control over, over development proposals on Zone 3 because we already know what the project look like, looks like. We know um, what the implications of that development would be. Um, and then, of course, the revenue, 150 units of uh, residential units up there, and permit revenue. Uh, there's an II payment in there for sewer infrastructure. Um, all of that revenue would be lost as well um, if this amendment was not approved. Um, slide, please. So last slide just trying to capture what uh, what is happening under this new agreement in terms of uh, mitigation. So that location of, of Pleasant Street at Olmstead Drive, the, the last outstanding requirement is to signalize it. The schedule for that is within 12 months of receipt of approvals from the select board. Um, I'm going to talk more about that in a moment, but let's just jump down to B. We've talked about McLean Drive. We've talked about the 210. There is a deadline here of June 30th of 2026. That signal, that upgrade, that work can be done anytime. What we are saying here is that regardless of the schedule and the timing of that, 2026, that signal upgrade needs to be complete. So to go to Olmstead at Pleasant. One of the things that has troubled me about this particular location and the requirement to signalize um, is that I, as much as I've dug into the history of uh, the agreement and the supporting engineering and, and work that was done by the McLean um, Advisory Committee back, uh, McLean Hospital Task Force, I couldn't find anything that recognized that in order for you to signalize a location, you have to meet a set of federal standards known as the Manual and Uniform Traffic Control Devices. That 
those federal standards by state statute must be adopted by Mass DOT. Mass DOT has the ability to amend uh, that that federal guidance, but the important thing is that MassDOT is forced to adopt the manual and what the manual requires. There are a series of warrants laid out in the MUTCD, that Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, MUTCD. There are a series of warrants that are laid out in the MUTCD. You have to meet at least one of them to justify signalizing an intersection. Now, our best guess is that back in 1999, when, when everyone was considering an assisted living development and the traffic generated from that facility added to um, an, a full-blown 150,000 square foot R&D development that somewhere between the two of those, uh, one of those warrants would be triggered and the justification for a signal would be there. Um, that's the best guess on why they were so firm about saying we're going to signalize this location. The manual, the MUTCD was in existence in 1999, so it's not even a question of, okay, these standards came after the fact. This, the, the, the requirement to meet warrants was in full effect back even in 1999. Um, so what we're saying here, this little caveat, within 12 months of receipt of approvals from the select board, the select board controls the public right of way, so any proposal to signalize this location, ultimately the select board would have to give their blessing because it's work to be done within the public right of way. Um, the challenge that we have, and the, and the challenge that we're faced with is we're not going to find a registered professional engineer that's going to design a set of signals in this location if those warrants aren't met, if at least one of those warrants isn't met. Um, and so we just want everyone to understand that even under the 1999 um, signalizing that intersection wasn't as simple as saying, okay, let's signalize it. There's a set of standards that have to be met, whether it's under the existing 1999 agreement or whether it's under the proposed 2024. Um, this condition and this constraint or this restraint exists under either one of these agreements. Um, it's just something that we have to be aware of. It's something that we have to deal with. Um, the important thing to note is the way that this uh, revision in 2024 has drafted is is there's no cap on the dollar amount that McLean Hospital is uh, is obligated to contribute to the signal. So if it comes to pass that, you know, in two years, the wa a warrant is met for signalization, McLean pays for it. If it takes 10 years, McLean pays for it. 15, 20, whatever the timing may be, there's no sunset on the fact that they have to pay for it and there is no value that, that is capped at. Um, so in the sense of the town being protected from the expense of signalizing that intersection, the town is protected in that regard. Um, Mr. Moderator, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Clancy. <clears throat> we now turn to uh, the amendment, Ms. Eckert's amendment. Um, Ms. Eckert, are you there? I'm here. Can, uh, can you? Please read your uh, amendment. Thank you. I move that the Article 2 in the 2024 Special Town Meeting Warrant is deferred to the fall or another Special Town Meeting. And let me get a... Mike, you're on mute. Excuse me, yeah, I'm on mute. I'll <laughs> vote of the I'll vote of the select board. Uh, Mr. Moderator Roy Epstein, chair of the select board. The select board unanimously recommends unfavorable action. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Eckert. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening, fellow town meeting members. Uh, my name is Yolanta Eckert, and I am a town meeting member, precinct three, uh, and I live in Woodlands two that you saw in the on the, uh, Mr. Clancy's uh, beautiful map at 68 South Cottage uh, Road. Uh, Mr. Mr. Moderator wanted me to make sure to let you know that I'm one of the many thousands of uh, butters to uh, the McLean District um, that has never been notified by the town of Belmont of any of these discussions or proceedings. So I just wanna make sure that we go on record on that. So thank you. Let, let me explain. Let me explain. Uh, it's our in our excuse me, uh, Yolanta. Uh, our town bylaws state that a town meeting member who speaks upon any matter in which the speaker or his or her immediate family has a direct financial interest shall first disclose such interest to the meeting. And uh, obviously, any abutter falls within that. 
um, that, that provision. So uh, this is no way to uh, uh, weigh in uh, pro or con on the amendment, but simply to follow our bylaws. Go ahead, Ms. Secretary. Thank, Thank you. you. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yes. This is Nancy Caselli from the Belmont Town Clerk's Office. Aaron Pinkalingus has a point of order, Precinct 6. Mr. Pinkalingus, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator. Aaron Pinkalingus, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 6. Um, I just want to know, is this an amendment? This seems to me more like a motion from to delay until time indefinite, which should probably be made from the floor. No, it can be made any time it can be made in advance or from the floor so it's a totally appropriate amendment it's, it, it, the effect of it is to is is an indefinite uh, postponement so uh, to clarify uh, this is this is the, is the amendment to replace the entire motion with this other motion or is this a motion in reaction to the main motion a, a, effectively the former uh in other words uh, which is why i have said that our discussion will shortly be on uh, both the main motion and this substitute because they're flip sides of the same coin. Uh, essentially, the amendment says vote no uh, to the main motion. Okay, thanks. Is that clear, Aaron? Uh, I don't. I don't. I, I guess I don't understand how this seems like a motion. Like uh, if someone if someone made a had those a main motion and I wanted to delay it until time indefinite, I would get in line. I would speak and say, I move to delay this until time indefinite. And then I would have three minutes to explain my rationale, um, not it a can, series of public emails and then 10 minutes. It, well, it can be done in, in advance. Uh, I've given, uh, which, which she has done. I mean, there's nothing that says it can't be done in advance, has to be done on the floor of town meeting. Uh, I've given, I've taken uh, moderators, uh, discretion and given her uh, more time to present her 10 minutes. But I've also uh, given uh, Mr. Upsign more time, 10 minutes to rebut. And I've done that because of the complexity of these issues. And so, uh, uh, but I want to be always be fair and balanced. So uh, um, that's why I, uh, we're going to hear 10 minutes each. But as far as when this motion is made, it can be uh, made in advance or on town meeting floor. Oh, great. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, well, go good. ahead. Ms. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. Your first question is why should I vote yes on this amendment? And there are two primary reasons. To obtain funding and move forward with Northland Residential Development in Zone 3, which includes portion of units to be affordable, the select board only needs to provide a formal commitment not to enforce the recourse actions Mr. Clancy talked about contained in the 1999 TMMA. This can be done tomorrow before deadline. Furthermore, it does not require town meeting ratification. Two, Article 2 asks town meeting to ratify an agreement with McLean Hospital, not Nortland Residential. The proposed TMMA eliminates traffic controls and reductions agreed to back in 1999, which paid, which Belmont paid for, from zone for site review process before any proposal is submitted by McLean. They have indicated that they want to use 90,000 square feet for two schools. By voting yes on the amendment, Northern Residential can obtain financing for Zone 3 housing development while Belmont preserves a comprehensive review process for Zone 4 development proposed by McLean. Slide 2, please. The TMMA co covers multiple development zones, <laughs> as Mr. Clancy outlined. Let's compare a couple components of the 1999 TMMA with those, proposed, with, with those in the proposed TMMA. First, let's look at traffic rates. As you can see in the proposed TMMA, Zone 3 residential development limits are eliminated, although the site review approval included rates submitted by Northland Residential. It does remove the recourse actions which are really needed for the residential development to move forward. More alarming is that the proposed TMMA removes all limits and recourse actions for Zone 4 development that McLean is planning to bring forward for rezoning considerations. Note the maximum traffic volume of 1,784 daily trips. More on that later. Slide three, please. 
Let's look at how traffic safety is addressed. The 1999 TMMA requires traffic light to be installed by McLean Hospital at Olmsted Drive and Pleasant Street prior to first building in zone three or four being occupied. The proposed TMMA has been revised multiple times. The latest version indicates the traffic light will be installed within 12 months of select board approval. Approval is not clearly defined, nor is there any time frame for granting such approval. The previous version indicated June 2028, which I suspect coincided with Zone 4 McLean schools coming online. Two years ago, the State Executive Director of Architecture Access Board indicated that the sidewalk on Olmsted Drive has to be corrected for ADA compliance. To date, that has not been completed, nor has included in the proposed TMMA. The note on the slide is a direct quote from the letter by the State Executive Director that was sent to Mr. Clancy and provided to McLean regarding the sidewalk from Waverly Woods to Trapella intersection where it does not follow Olmsted Drive and is much steeper. Slide four, please. Let's review what Nortland residential needs from the town to obtain funding for Zone Three's residential development. Since Norland Residential purchased Zone 3 land in April 2023, we need to provide Norland Residential with relief from the town's enforced recourse actions in the 1999 TMMA. This can be done tomorrow morning with a memorandum from Select Board on behalf of the town or with a simple agreement. I am surprised that it has not been done already. As per my direct conversation with Jack Dolly a couple of weeks ago, he asked for relief from this morning peak hours rates, which were the major concern. Since such a memorandum or simple agreement would not change the 1999 TMMA, the TAMIA would not need to ratify it as proposed in Article 2. Slide 5, please. Let's look at why McLean wants to revise the 1999 TMMA. McLean has indicated that it intends to bring forward proposal to develop 90,000 square feet of Zone 4 for educational purposes to expand the Arlington School and Relocate Pathways Academy. We look forward to the meeting this Friday with the Select Board on this topic. Let's consider the traffic implications of such a change. Using U.S. average square footage for, per student in the school, 90,045, and you, anybody can Google this, 90,000 square feet can support up to two, about 2,000 students. Since both schools are currently day schools, this means 8,000 trips per day, two trips for drop-off, and two for pickup by parents or specialized vans. If you ever walk the McLean campus at the Arlington School Dismissal Time, you will see a line of cars picking up students. The 1999 TMMA will trigger weekly weekly penalties based on the maximum day trips of 1785 allowed in zone four that I previously mentioned. Let's compare that to an R&D facility. U.S. average square footage for researcher ranges from 200 to 400 square feet. Using the midpoint of 300, 90,000 square feet facility can support 300 researchers who will generate about 600 daily trips. Back in 1999, traffic around McLean District was already a problem and is the reason why Zone 4 was to be the R&D faci facility limited to 150,000 square feet for which the town of Belmont paid the $2.2 million. Now the select board is asking you to remove these restrictions without a comprehensive site review by the planning board. Slide six, please. It is important that the town and McLean renegotiate the 1999 agreements between McLean before McLean is given any relief for Zone 4. McLean has paid zero taxes for Zone 3 and 4 over the 20 years. Revenue losses on over 23 acres of land are estimated in several millions. In 1999, there were potential buyers for Zone 3 and 4, thus the language in the tax agreement indicated that when each zone was sold, or development occurred, ta tax payments would be due. Unfortunately, sales in each zone fell through. Olmsted Drive was constructed. Sewer and electrical improvements were completed by 2005. While these are all part of the development process, the town imposed no tax payments. A review of this has been requested. In addition, as of June 17th, no tax bill for Zone 3 was issued despite the sale in, in April of 2023. 
This was brought forward at the public hearing and the assessor board had an emergency meeting on June 20th. Based on Mr. Epstein's letter, corrective action was taken and tax bills for FY23 and 24 were issued. You should also be aware that the 1999 tax agreement prevents pilot payments by McLean Hospital as long as Woodlands develop and generate taxes that are larger than the McLean Institutional had generated in 1999. This might have been a good solution in 1999, but in 2023, Mass General Brigham, the owner of McLean, has paid almost $10 million in pilot payments to the city of Boston. Lastly, the 1999 agreement indicates the Belmont taxpayer were to pay McLean $2.2 million when zone for a conceptual plan was approved. As Mr. Clancy indicated, <clears throat> in 2001, the town appropriated a payment of $1.5 million and received the credit of $500,000 for the legal costs, and the remaining $200,000 is being applied against the credit of the three hundred ten outstanding payment by McLean to the town for traffic mitigations and surrounding intersections. So why should the town eliminate traffic volume controls from zone for now development and allow 8,000 trips per day when it paid McLean 2.2 million for traffic volume controls? Slide seven, please. When the 1999 agreement is compared with what McLean has actually delivered, many issues become apparent. I've laid out a few of these that may be of interest. Some folks are interested in stormwater. The original site approval required a stormwater detention to be built at Upham Bowl to serve the hospital, Zone 5, Zone 3, and 4. The town allowed, allowed Olmstead Drive to be built and provided Zone 3 approval without it. Will it be required for Zone 4? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah Lanta, we're at the nine-minute yeah. mark. Yep. Yeah. McLean was to provide 310 to town in 1999 for improvements to intersections around McLean. This never occurred and the value of this in today's dollars is significantly reduced. There were also financial commitments to, made to open space and annual maintenance of it um, that were included in 99 agreements. Once again, the records can be located. Lastly, the maintenance of traffic light at Mill Street and McLean Drive is seriously lacking, creating frustration and safety concerns to the Belmont taxpayers generating about $10 million a year. Slide eight, please. By voting yes on the amendment, Select Board can issue a memorandum or sign an agreement with Northland, with Northland Residential indicating that Belmont will not, will not enforce recourse actions in the 1999 TMMA so that Jack Dolly can obtain uh, uh, funding as and Zone 3 can move forward. We also assure that the planning board review of Zone 4 proposal that will be submitted by McLean is comprehensive, including traffic considerations. I respectfully ask for your yes vote on this amendment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Eckert. Uh, Mr. Epstein? Thank you, Mr. Moderator Roy Epstein, <clears throat> Chair of the Select Board and uh, Town Meeting Member from Precinct 6. I wrote all the Town Meeting Members a letter on Monday to uh, <clears throat> summarize what I'm about to say here. I'll try to be brief and try to also to touch upon some of the points that uh, Ms. Eckert just brought up. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, as Glenn said, uh, the TMMA agreement is 25 years old. It was intended for projects that never happened, and it's become a barrier. In particular, the Zone 3 project cannot succeed and uh, cannot proceed with the TMMA in place. And uh, the same factors that make it really impossible to develop Zone 3 will be a barrier for Zone 4. And uh, given the town's interest in all sorts of uh, objectives, um, uh, new housing development, townhouses, apartments, senior living, affordable housing, housing in general, property tax revenue, having barriers to development, really needless barriers to development on zone three and zone four are uh, not desirable. It should be revised. Next slide. Uh, Glenn showed you this picture I've just circled where the intersection of Olmstead Drive and Pleasant Street is, it's, it's pretty much behind the star market. Really what we're talking about 
is an agreement to manage traffic, traffic only, and the signal would be installed here at the bottom of Olmstead Drive as a byproduct uh, and a productive result of the discussions we had uh, since May, we're also now proposing to include with this work upgrading of the other signal to enter McLean over on Mill Street, but that's not in this uh, picture. Uh, next slide. Uh, if we don't act tonight, as I've said before, time is of the essence. Jack Dawley emailed me saying that if this amendment passes, as far as he's, he's concerned, the Zone 3 project is dead. That means we lose everything that was approved in the 2020 special town meeting, which proved uh, passed by an overwhelming margin. The townhouses, the apartments, the senior housing, the affordable housing, the tax revenue, the very signal improvements on Mill Street that we'd like to see, and loss of property tax revenue. That, that's what happens if you pass this amendment. Next slide. Many factual assertions, uh, many assertions have been made in the last couple of weeks. Some of them have come and gone and been revised, but let's just focus on verified facts. The Zone 3 land was sold in 2023. There's not some past due tax amount. It only became taxable in April of last year. It's been fully assessed. I would like to thank the Eckerts for pointing this out. It was captured in time and all the tax bills for 23 and 24 will be issued. There will be no question of back taxes. Zone four, it's been alleged several times that the agreement was ambiguous or confusing or unclear and that the attorney for McLean somehow couldn't be relied upon to, to accurately relate the tax situation of zone four. It should be clear if you look at the tax agreement from 1999, it included language for a special act, which was actually passed by the legislature in, in the spring of 2020, sorry, in the spring of 2000, 20, oh, 24 years ago. The special act says that whoever owns zone four when it's developed will pay full freight tax regardless of their tax status otherwise. For-profit, non-profit or whatever, whoever owns zone four pays tax on the development. It was alleged a couple, uh, last week even that there was a $1.5 million buy-down payment if Zone 4 was developed. Not true. Town meeting appropriated the money for that years and years ago. There have been uh, insinuations about the Olmstead Drive layout, infrastructure with stormwater, the, the, the accessible path which comes down to the signalized crosswalk at Trapello Road and Pleasant Street all of that was evaluated and part of the site plan approval uh, back in 2022. Uh, and in particular, not only did they did it pass muster with the planning board, the planning board pointed out that these issues were outside of zone three and really irrelevant. And they're certainly irrelevant to the TMMA because they don't involve traffic. Uh, next slide. I don't think zone four can reasonably be seen to be a concern for the planning board. The issue for the TMMA, the, the issue for the TMMA is traffic. The signal at Olmstead Drive will regulate all the traffic into zone three and zone four. And in fact, if the Arlington School was relocated to zone four, that would actually balance traffic better and benefit the residents of the woodlands because it would move existing traffic over to Olmstead Drive, which is very lightly used and would be very lightly used, certainly initially with Zone 3, as, it has, as has been pointed out already. But the main point is that anything that happens at Zone 4 will undergo the planning board, full planning board review. And that, that approval process uh, will certainly address traffic and will and will address mitigation measures as needed for any development that's actually proposed. And the signal, uh, the signal is part of that and the, the planning board can institute any other restrictions it sees fit. You, you don't have to worry about that for the TMMA. Next slide. If we don't approve this TMMA, as has been pointed out, the amendment, the amendment becomes a vote against the TMMA. If we don't revise the TMMA as we've suggested, 
then we are really torpedoing the benefits of the 2020 special town meeting uh, and associated property tax revenue. But moreover, we've already had at least one experience in town of a developer being stymied in his development goals and then turning to a hostile 40B. Right now, the zone three development is an extremely friendly 40B. Mr. Dolly and Northland have accommodated the, the town in countless ways to provide a desirable mix of housing, uh, townhouse units, apartment units, age restricted units, general units, affordable units, to reflect a wide range of constituencies and uh, desires and demands within Belmont. He's accommodated all of that in, in a most, I would say, generous way. If this project is killed by rejecting the TMMA, we are, I think, certainly opening the door to a completely unknown alternative project, which is really another name for the potential for a hostile 40B. It would be far denser. It would not have to reflect any of the objectives from the 2020 town meeting uh, and planning board review, and it would not be subject to local zoning control because it would be a hostile 40B. So I concluded my letter by saying, why pick a lose, lose, lose strategy? Uh, next slide. So please uh, vote no on the amendment and vote yes on the original motion to approve the, the revised TMMA. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. We now go to uh, uh, discussion uh, of um, both the main motion and the amendment. Um, Mr. Moderator, Tyler. Alan O'Brien Cushman, the town clerk. At this time, there are six people with their hands up. Um, we will start with Joe Wright, Mary Lewis, and Rachel Heller are the first three. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wright, go ahead. I think you're enabled, Mr. Wright. Can you? You know, uh, four years of this uh, pandemic, and I still failed to hit the mute button. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's an embarrassment. Uh, the uh, I'm identify Wright, your subject. Thanks. Town meeting member, precinct one. Um, I rise to oppose this amendment and support the main motion. Um, I believe Rachel Heller is in line and she will speak, uh, I'm sure, more eloquently about the overall situation. I want to speak about one particular fact in Ms. Eckert's uh, presentation, the idea that a uh, specialized private school for adolescents with uh, serious mental health uh, uh, issues would include 2,000 uh, students is a is a um, simply, uh, you know, psychiatrically and not uh, and logistically uh you know implausible to an extreme um i i um i'll simply limit myself to a to a um a rebuttal of that a kind of obviously a not correct um extrapolation of the of the possible effects of of that and say that in general um since the since the arrival of 40b in 1969 called the Anti-Snob Zoning Act, uh, many people have have uh, tried to bar uh, 40B, both friendly and hostile developments, uh, and they rarely say why uh, they are doing it and often come up with many, many other arguments for why. Uh, I would like to support this friendly 40B development, and, um, and I urge all other town members to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Mary Lewis, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I appreciate this being virtual so that I can participate from far away. Um, I also rise in an opposition to this Mary, motion. Mary, can you just identify yourself? I'm sorry. Mary Lewis, uh, town meeting member, precinct one. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I rise in opposition to the motion, to the amendment and in favor of the main motion. Um, I am struck by the arguments of Ms. Eckert not really being about delay, but being 
in opposition to the main motion. So I share some of the concerns that were raised earlier about the point of order. Uh, this seems like an argument against the main motion and not really an argument in favor of delay. I have not heard any reason why we should delay, um, but I have heard good reasons from Mr. Epstein and in a email from Rachel, Rachel Heller, who's up next, um, about why it's important to do this now. So I just want to simply say that I'm in favor of a friendly 40B. Um, there are lots of um, areas in town that have traffic issues, and we should not be using one traffic air, um, you know, chokehold as a reason to hold up um, in, in a development that will bring tax revenue and bring affordable housing to our town and that we've worked so hard on and approved um, you know, in um, town meetings several years ago. So again, I hope people will vote no against the amendment and in favor of the main motion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rachel Heller. Are you there, Rachel? Hi, sorry, I'm not sure why I wasn't connecting so easily. Huh. Um, sorry about that. I'm Rachel Heller, town meeting member, precinct three, member of the housing trust, and I was co-chair of the housing trust when we worked in partnership with Northland and the planning board to create the proposal that was ultimately approved by town meeting. I urge you to vote yes on the main motion to revise the TMMA with McLean Hospital and to vote no on the amendment. In 2020, town meeting voted overwhelmingly in support of new homes at McLean. Today, a 25-year-old traffic mitigation agreement created for a different development that was never built stands in the way of delivering on housing that will add revenue for Belmont, affordability for residents, downsizing options for seniors, and preserve Belmont's ability to make development decisions in accordance with the state's affordable housing law, Chapter 40B. Now, Northland's initial vision did not line up with what the community needed as identified in our housing production plan. So in response, the Housing Trust led an effort to create a proposal that would increase affordable housing to 25%, generate that revenue that we need for town, and one that would also pencil out for the developer. We asked for a lot. We asked for a development that included rentals when initially it was only going to be home ownership. We asked to include housing that is open to all household types and not only age restricted, enabling Belmont to meet multiple housing needs. We asked Northland to do a friendly 40B to partner with the town and to go beyond our inclusionary zoning. Not only did Jack Dolly and Northland agree to make 25% of the apartments affordable, but he agreed to make 5% of the apartments deeply affordable for people at or below 50% of the area median income. In addition, our energy committee asked for buildings to be electric, Jack agreed. Jack agreed to nearly everything we asked for and he has worked diligently over four years to build these homes. Belmont approved the zoning change four years ago with 98% of support at town meeting. For zoning to become homes, we need to create clear and predictable processes. Updating a 25-year-old traffic mitigation agreement will make this development viable. In the future, we need to adopt practices that will deliver on the housing we need while also preserving what it is that we love about our great community. So voting yes tonight on the underlying uh, motion will help Nor Northland to secure financing and begin construction on the homes that people, our community, and our economy need. This development will also put Belmont in the driver's seat when it comes to housing development. This development, as you heard, will achieve a safe harbor for Belmont. This means that Belmont can say no to development that doesn't fit our goals and plans. Now, this safe harbor lasts for two years. Make well, sure we're nearing the three minutes here. I will move quickly, uh, but to continue, so after two years, our safe harbor would end. To continue to have that safe harbor, to get to the 10% that allows us to always determine what's uh, built in Belmont, 
then that means we also need to implement our MBTA zoning. We need to update our inclusionary zoning. And we need to make sure that we are in, that we're really increasing our affordable housing as we move on uh, to the MBTA Communities Act in the fall. Uh, so when I just want to end with saying when we have more housing opportunities, it generates the revenue for Belmont. It creates options for seniors to downsize. Renters can become homeowners. People can raise their families here. People who work here can live here. And our businesses have more of the foot traffic they need to thrive. So I urge you to vote yes. Let's give the green light to the homes that we need. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien yes. Cushman, we have 14 people with their hands raised, starting with Ira Morgenstern, Marty Bittner, and Adam Dash, the first three. Thank you. Ira, go ahead. Uh, good evening. This is Ira Morgenstern. I'm a uh, town meeting member from Precinct 7. Um, normally, one looks at the immediate problem and addresses that. The immediate problem is allowing Zone 3 development to close financing and move forward. That is the key problem that we have been presented and normally we address the known problem the immediate problem we don't know what the zone for development will be we'll find out more two days from now but th there's been no study of the traffic impact of the zone for development it doesn't um it is um Unusual to waive the zone for traffic limitations, mitigations, and recourse without knowing what the real hurt points are. Um, I strongly feel that we should act on zone three issues only. And if we did and, wa and did not waive the uh, traffic issues on zone four until we know more, we could still get all the benefits that Rachel said. We would get safe harbor, we'd have housing, we'd have good projects and good partners. But right now, we're opening this thing up in a way that's frankly not necessary to solve the problem, the immediate problem. And uh, let me turn that into a question, if I could. Why are we including zone four waiver in addressing the zone three problem? What specifically, what specific hurt points have been uh, presented to us on zone four? Thank you, Ira. Mr. Epstein, do you want to respond to that or somebody else? Uh, Roy Epstein, Chair of the Select Board. Um, this TMMA is an agreement between the town and McLean. Both sides need to agree. McLean indicated their desire to modify the traffic restrictions for zone four and on the town side uh certainly in my view and i welcome uh glenn clancy's opinion as well the focus was on traffic safety and the tmma as drafted provides the safety that we were concerned about because the the issue with traffic management is entry and entry exit and entry from Pleasant Street, the signal controls that. And I would agree with uh, Mr. Wright from the very beginning that this prediction of 8,000 trips a day uh, from the school is entirely speculative and, and has no foundation at all. The, the, re the expected traffic volumes from zone four should be entirely manageable between this TMMA and the normal planning board controls on development. 
Thank you. Can I uh, do a follow up here? Yes, you may, Ira. Um, specifically, what is the uh, traffic outlook for Zone 4? My understanding is that we could have between 500 and 1,000 additional trips at between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. Mr. Clancy. We don't know very much, so I look forward to understanding uh, the basis for your assurance, Mr. Epstein. Mr. Clancy? Mr. Moderator, Glenn Clancy, town engineer. Um, Ira, I don't know that we have the exact numbers on what's on what is currently proposed because I haven't seen uh, a trip generation study done for a school use. Um, we do have the base numbers, of course, from 1999 when it was contemplated being 150,000 square feet of strictly R&D. Um, I can tell you that through the site plan approval process for Zone 3, one of the required submittals by the planning board was an updated traffic study for that, for that particular use, and I would imagine that that would be a requirement once an application for Zone 4 is submitted. I will also say that for what it's worth, um, in discussing the trip generation numbers of a school versus an R and D, uh, you know, as we've discussed, sort of splitting up that hundred and fifty thousand with ninety of it being school, sixty of it being R and D. Um, the representative from McLean Hospital felt strongly that they could live under the current numbers. So there, there was not a sense that changing from a full R&D to a split use of a school in R&D was going to generate more traffic. Uh, the, the, the sense was that it would actually be less. Uh, but that would be borne out ultimately from a traffic study that I would, rec that I would imagine the planning board would require. Thank you, Glenn. Right, thank you. And that is exactly the issue. We don't know. We are losing leverage by waiving the as the limitation aspects on zone four. There's no reason to do it until we know more. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marty Bittner. Uh, Marty Bittner, town meeting member, precinct two, also member of the energy committee. I, I rise in support of the main motion and in opposition to this amendment. And I'd like to relay uh, our experience as members of the energy committee and in interacting with uh, Northland and Jack Dolly over the last few years. Um, we had, we've had many meetings with Jack uh, where, where he listened to and responded to our desires as the energy committee to uh, pursue a sustainable development, which in this context means as much electrification as possible. And uh, prior to when we changed the building codes to require electrification, Jack was very accommodating and willing to put in electric heating, electric water heating, induction stoves, EV chargers, and essentially everything that that we asked for. And so uh, from from a sustainability perspective, you couldn't ask for a more friendly developer. And so I, I would ask that people who support sustainable uh, development in town uh, disapprove this amendment and support the main motion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ellen. Mr. Moderator, there are 18 people with their hands there. Adam Dash, Ra uh, Rafi Manjikian, and Kathy Kahane are the first three. Thank you, Adam Dash, you're up. Thank you, Adam Dash, town meeting member, precinct one. I oppose the amendment to delay and I support the motion to revise the TMMA. I find the arguments for the amendment to indefinitely postpone unpersuasive. This is not about pilot payments, the 1999 development proposals, ADA access, stormwater control. This is about the Northland housing developments, traffic counts and mitigation if they go over the counts. It's actually pretty simple. In my job practicing zoning law for developers, I have seen recently uh, investors in residential developments balk at uh, parking counts and parking controls 
and holding back financing. Northland's predicament is not limited to them, I can assure you of that. I would note the die is cast for this property 25 years ago when it was rezoned. When I first ran for the select board in 2017, getting development started on these, on these parcels was one of my priorities because it seemed easier pickings because the zoning was already in place to do development. Now we're at the one yard line. Please don't stop this now. Um, the, we need the development to help resolve our structural deficit, get us into safe harbor to protect from hospital 40B, and traffic is going to be part of that. You may recall we did a town-wide traffic study a few years ago, which showed that a good chunk of our traffic is cut through. Honestly, I'm not willing to put us in jeopardy and risk developments going away so that other people in other towns can zip easily through Belmont. Um, as Chair Epstein said, if you continue this article, you're gonna kill the project. And if you kill the project, we're gonna be vulnerable to hostile 40B development. And that means something like the Royal Belmont, where the forest used to be, or the Beatrice Circle development, which was contentious and is now in court. And that event, which I think is gonna be likely, it may not be with Northland, but it may be with somebody else, we would lose control of the land and be subject to a larger development without the senior housing and the other benefits. Should be clear, the choice is really not between this Northland development and no development. And I know that some of the butters would rather have no development. That's really not going to happen. The zoning is in place. The choice is really between Northland development and someone coming in here with some larger 40B development, which is probably what's going to happen if we end up indefinitely postponing and or turning down the uh, underlying motion. If we're going to oppose development because of a butter and traffic concerns, how are we going to develop anything? We're going to have the MBTA Communities Act coming up soon, which is going to unlock areas for further development, which I'm sure the butters are going to have some legitimate issues with. And as you know, with projects we've had, there have been a butter issues with everything from the Underwood Pool to the community path, to the police station, to the high school. It always comes up, yet we manage to move forward and we persevere for the greater good. We've been working to provide non-car travel alternatives in this town, which is why the town community path is so important. Let's pass this town meeting, this TMMA revision now and defeat the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kathy Cohane. Pardon me? Rafi. Oh, pardon me, Rafi. I uh, I jumped over you, Rafi Manjiki. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rafi Manjiki, on town meeting member, precinct three, resident of Summit Road. Um, I rise in support of the uh, um, the amended motion. Um, when Adam just spoke a moment ago, he said it's pretty simple. It's about traffic mitigation and traffic counts. So with that being said, I don't understand why we just can't simply respond to Mr. Dolly's request to waive the traffic mitigation concerns that he has. Um, that zone four is not a concern and you're taking some tools away from the planning board to be able to have some recourse and some mitigation standards. Um, it's surprising how the planning board can do that if in fact, there's a bundling with zone three and zone four for this traffic mitigation amended. Um, a question that I have, uh, Mr. Moderator, if I may, what was the uh, assessed value and the payment made by Northland? Uh, Mr. Clancy, did you hear that question? Okay. Could you repeat that uh, question, Rafi? Um, Northland purchased that land from McLean Hospital. What was the purchase price and what's the assessed value for the tax for the town of Belmont? Mr. Moderator, Glenn Clancy, Thanks. town engineer. Um, Mr. Moderator, Rafi, I, I don't have that information. I, I will tell you that I did some research on the uh, Middlesex uh, County Registry of Deeds trying to find information like that, but frankly, the documents I found were beyond my uh, my expertise. I, I couldn't I couldn't answer the question. Yeah, I too was uh, stymied when I looked at the assessor's uh, records. There's no notation and any. I went through the entire alphabet, if you will. Yeah, um, I, I was looking the, strict, I, I was looking I, at the I, deed I, documents on the registry. Me. And I couldn't make it out. Glenn, Glenn, Sorry. excuse me. I think 
Jennifer Hewitt has the, uh, do you have the answer to that? Dan Dargan has the answer. Mr. Dargan. Uh, there I am. Hi, uh, Dan Dargon, Administrative Assessor. Uh, the sale price for was two deeds uh, the, uh, for the April date of ten million and six million, both for parcel of three. Uh, the bill that was issued for fiscal year two thousand twenty four is one hundred fifteen thousand four hundred forty one ninety two. Uh, the two thousand twenty three bill is a prorated bill for the year. Uh, once under chapter uh, chapter fifty nine section two C. Once property goes from being an exempt property into a taxable status, it's a prorated portion. The prorated portion of that bill uh, will be um, 30, uh, 39,147.23. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I, again, rise in support of the amendment that's put forward by Ms. Eckerd. The agreement that we have with McLean for the traffic mitigation is with McLean. But we're talking about a party that has already purchased land, and there should be a simple agreement, as Mr. Dash has stated, with Northland. Um, I please rise again to support the amended motion and uh, ask the town meeting to consider that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Cohane. Hi, Kathy Cohane, Precinct 2 town meeting member. I also rise in support of this amendment. Um, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot of information. Jack Dolly's been great. He's a businessman. There's something in it for him, I'm sure. But but my, my key question is this. The TMMA is an agreement with the town and with McLean. Um, Jack Dolly owns this the land for Zone 3 outright. Could George Hall or someone speak to the suggestion that the select board could release um, Jack Dolly from the the traffic recourse or the the you know kind of the constraints. Is it as simple as just um, giving him relief from that? He is not McLean, and I and and I will just add. And I think giving away all the controls, potential controls that we may have, when we don't yet know what McLean is planning to do, just seems foolish. But please answer if, if there can be a simple agreement that would release Jack Dolly from uh, the traffic obligations. Thank you. Thank you, George Hall. George Hall, Town Council. Um, the, the, uh, as, as a successor in, in title to McLean, um, the Northland entities that purchase the zone three parcels are subject to the agreement, uh, the traffic, the TMMA, the TMMA cannot be amended without town meeting approval. Um, so the, the, the board could agree to enforcement forbearance, um, but it wouldn't be binding on, you know, a successor board, and and uh, for that reason, uh, the, the the current board is in no position to make a permanent, um, you know, relaxation of the recourse actions in the existing agreement without town meeting approval. Um, in my view of the, this, as we've negotiated this right along with with. Jack Dolly and McLean is that this is an agreement with McLean um, that um, it, it can't be amended without um, the consent of all parties here. And we did our best to reach an agreement which we thought was in the best interest of the town. Thank you for that. I still rise in support of the amendment. I think a special town meeting in the fall will give us the opportunity to hear more about what McLean is planning and to make sure that we have the right protections and controls in place for our town. Thank you. Thank you. Adriana Poole. You there, Adriana? Yes, I am, Mr. Moderator. 
Adriana Poole, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. Move the question. And you're muted. Move. She has moved the question. Is there a second? Need to see some hand. <clears throat> yes, second. So um, we'll now take a vote on terminating debate. As you know, it takes two thirds vote to terminate debate. How many people in line do we have, Ellen? Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, at this time there are 16 people in line. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, um, let's open the polls. All right, a few more seconds. All right, let's show the vote. So if this does not pass, it's 113 in favor, 92 opposed, so it falls a little short of the two thirds required. Let's see if there are any emergency votes so we can have a final tally. Are there any else? Do you... Yes, they are making their way upstairs, Mr. Okay. Moderator. We Thank are you. a little slower just because of how we had to structure today. <laughs> that is fine. So momentarily, we'll just go back to uh, the line. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman. Town Clerk, there is uh, an emergency vote from Ann Jansen of Precinct 3 on the terminate debate. She votes yes. Thank you. So the final tally is 114 in favor, 92 opposed, 3 abstention. Falls short of the two-thirds required. So with that, we'll go back to uh, uh, the line. I think, Lisa Pargoli, you are next. Mr. Moderator, while um, everybody is getting ready, it's Ellen O'Brien Cushman again. I just want to give people an alert uh, after Lisa. There are 16 people in line. Vincent Stanton and Michael McNamara will be the next two after Lisa. Hi. Um, hi, Lisa Pagoli, uh, town meeting member, Precinct 4. Uh, thank you. Um, I rise in support of the amendment. Um, this, I just don't understand how anybody could ever think that pouring more traffic into Waverly Square that's already a parking lot is helpful. Um, there has to be traffic. They've got to try to do something. We talked about this, and I know we mentioned it before, but you know, there's been no consideration about the impact of all of this into Waverly Square because it pours directly from the driveway into it on top of the fact that now we're mitigating like almost 2,000 more units of affordable housing in Waverly Square. It's already a parking lot. I can't get out of my driveway. I can't get on the Trapella Road. I mean, I can't see where any of this 
I mean, this was 25 years ago. There wasn't nearly as much traffic out in Waverly Square. There weren't as nearly as many houses in the neighborhood that they've dropped them. I mean, this is huge, big impacts on us. And no one has had taken any consideration of what this is going to do to us. Um, I do have one question because all I keep hearing about is this affordable housing and how we need the housing stock and the deep, deep affordable 40B housing because it brings in it for the revenue. How does affordable housing bring in revenue to the town? Thank you. Rachel Heller, are you there? Would you like to answer that or uh, Patrice Carbon? Or Jennifer? Hi, yes, uh, Jennifer Hewitt, uh, Assistant Town Administrator, Finance Director. Just to, to mention that assisted living, or I'm sorry, um, affordable housing is um, part of the tax rolls, just like um, like everyone else. I would like to um, defer, though, to um, Dan Dargan. It looks like his hand is up, if, if he could speak to that. Excuse Great. Thank me, you, Jennifer. Mr. Moderator. Yes. This is Nancy at the town clerk's office. Uh, Melissa McIntyre has a point of order. She's uh... Uh, Go ahead, Melissa. Hi, this is Melissa McIntyre, town meeting member, precinct eight. My recollection is that in your opening comments, Mr. Moderator, you stated that traffic in Waverly Square was not in scope. Am I remembering that correctly? You are, and I was just about to uh, interrupt Ms. Pargoli, but then she uh, uh, stopped and asked the question, which is, is within scope. Uh, I noticed that as well, and I'd already <laughs> made my comment, but that's what yes. my point. That's what my point. Uh, that's what my phone order was going to be. Thank you. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you. It's just a little hard not to, where it's all one unit. How can you separate? Um, well, the traffic that's what, coming out of McLean property onto Ms. Pleasant Ms. Street and Trapello Road. That is not, how can you not include that in? It's traffic. Ms. Yeah, yes, but that's not what we're debating tonight. But in any case, you asked the question, so let me uh, turn to Dan. Uh, uh, Dan Argon, uh, Dan Argon, uh, administering assessor. Uh, affordable units, even though they are at a reduced rate, they still have an assessment at that reduced rate. So a uh, unit that's on for that is not reduced, we obviously have a higher assessment, but there is an assessment associated with all four of the units. So they do, they will pay taxes. But what about Thank services? You, Mr. Darden. What about the remaining, just, just the services too? It, <clears throat> is there an associate, a cost for that as well? I mean. Do you want to answer that? Everybody. Well, I think. Well, I'm not sure who's. I mean, it's projecting. I, I'm not sure who is who would uh, be able to answer. That's that. all right. They might. They might not have the answer. That's all right. I, I will move on because nobody listens anyway. Thank you. Um, Mr. Epstein, did you? Uh, Mr. Moderator Roy Epstein, uh, Chair of the Select Board. Uh, in 2020, this is really a question that goes back to the planning board approval for the project. It's not at all related to the TMMA, but uh, a financial analysis was prepared for the project as a whole, and the project as a whole was a uh, positive cash flow benefit for the town. But if we have to pay for services that normal residents who live in a home or pay their regular taxes aren't on affordable housing, we'll have to subsidize for that. Is that correct? I mean, just uh, to get I, an idea of the uh, impact. I, I don't believe so because the project as a whole is cash flow positive. And Mr. Moderator, I think we're really- We uh, are, and I'm, this point. I'm gonna have us move on. Yes. Um, Elizabeth Dion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Elizabeth Dion, Select Board Vice Chair, uh, Town Meeting Member at Large. Given the lateness of the hour, I'll keep my comments very brief. I want to second what Adam Dash said in particular about two things, that we have a huge problem with cross-town traffic, and this is not going to be cross-town traffic. It's going to be traffic within Belmont. 
uh, my primary concerns about traffic right now are safety and trying to enable uh, residents to travel within the town safely. Um, if we mitigate traffic here, uh, water finds its level. There will just be more traffic that comes in. So I, I have no desire to make traffic better simply for those who are using us as, as a cut through. Um, larger point, and I know we're not discussing uh, zone four tonight, but the way that we vote tonight will have a very significant impact on uh, Belmont's reputation. And right now, unfortunately, Belmont has a very poor reputation when it comes to um, our attitude toward business and commercial development. And this is a housing development, this is true, but town meetings willingness to be flexible to allow this development to go forward will send a very important signal uh, to other developers who are listening and watching. Belmont is in a desirable location. It's a desirable demographic, a desirable town. And so I do feel that the vote tonight has implications far beyond just a zone three. And again, being mindful of the scope, uh, we'll try not to spend too much time on that. Um, but do want to say that when it comes to the development of zone four, the planning board, I think, will be involved. Um, if anything, uh, we would like to um, explore potential options there. Um, McLean needs to know that we're a reliable negotiating partner, that we're a friendly negotiating partner. Um, the I ran on a, a pro development platform. Both of the recent select board candidates, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Lubian, also ran on a pro development platform. This is very popular with the town. It does reflect what the town wants. Uh, not just what the town wants, but what the town needs to build a secure financial foundation going forward. Um, if we do not do this, uh, we will potentially have desire, uh, dire consequences. And then the last thing that I want to point out is we are really hoping to not have to go out for an override in three years again. I don't know how we do this. Um, we're all putting our heads to it. Uh, even though the vote was successful, part of the reason it was successful is that we hadn't asked for one in nine years. Um, the revenue that comes from this project will absolutely help us if we can defer that even one year. That's incredibly important. Um, and we need to signal to the voters of the town that we are doing everything in our power to uh, both manage our finances responsibly, but also to go after every available dollar. And the dollars in this development are very much included in that calculus. Thank you. I mute. Uh, thank you, Michael McNamara. I'm Michael McNamara, town meeting member, precinct seven. Um, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Uh, geez. Um, but uh, I wanted to speak, um, and more importantly, two things. I wanted to make a comment, but first a question. Uh, Mr. Clancy, um, you had mentioned how um, traffic in zone three and four has been an issue that has been addressed both by the petitioner of the amendment and also by other people in town meeting who mentioned and talked. What is the impact, though, if we don't let this project go and we aren't in safe harbor? Because my assumption is that we have traffic that we might have if we allow the affordable housing, but if we don't do this project, we don't have safe harbor, we could theoretically have many, possibly two or more, hostile 40B projects that would involve more traffic all over the town. So instead of having a small bit of traffic in a limited space, which would be limited and could be regulated, we'd have potential 40B in multiple locations that we couldn't control and we'd have no traffic enforcement ability to tell the developer no. So I feel like if we're thinking about this from a larger perspective, we really need to think about a controlled thing where we have some control versus complete out of control potential 40B that would have no limit on it. Mr. Um, Clancy? Mr. Moderator. Glenn Clance, town engineer. Um, well, I think that when you consider that what's on the table is a 150 unit housing development versus what could potentially be twice as many units, um, I think it's logical to say that you're going to, you know, have some significant increase in trip generation with a 40B versus the friendly 40B that we're talking about this evening. Um, beyond that, I, you know, that's it's tough I, you know i one of the things i really don't know for certain is if there is a tmma in place and a 40b development comes to the town of belmont is that 
is that TMMA enforceable? Um, in other words, will the TMMA put restrictions on a potential 40B development? I don't know the answer to that. My fear is that if a developer pursuing a 40B feels constrained by a traffic mitigation and monitoring plan and, and appeals to the state, the fact that Belmont has a six six and a half percent SHI percentage um, is not going to bode well for us. And my fear is that the state would look at that traffic mitigation plan and think it is an impediment to 40B development and throw it out. That's right. in, in, in complete that speculation on my part. Complete sure. speculation. Mr. McNamara. Sure. Just really quick. To, thank you, Clancy. Uh, thank you, um, sir, Mr. Clancy. Um, <laughs> I just want to say, to be really clear, I do understand concerns about traffic, but we're going to make the problem much worse, much worse, if we have no control and if 40B come rolling in, 40Bs come rolling in here because we don't reach Safe Harbor. Safe Harbor is financially and um, just from a government control and from making sure we control our own town, fundamental. And if we don't, if we pass up on this project and we get ticky tacky with the developer who's trying to be friendly with us, they could very well turn unfriendly to us and we'd have a consequence. And I would just, summarize my, my last point by saying um, we do not have 2,000 uh, affordable housing units. That's a major problem. We have nowhere close to that. And I hear a lot about zone four, but we're voting on zone three. So let's focus on the zone that we're dealing with. Where zone four is out of order, zone, zone three is what we're voting on now. And I don't want to have more traffic because we're a pa penny wise and pound foolish. Thank you. Please oppose the uh, amendment and support the uh, main motion. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ellen. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman, the town clerk. At this point, there are 17 people in order. Vincent Stanton, Ada Batista, and Paul Joy are the first three. We'll do a couple more, and then we're going to break for five minutes and then resume. And I would encourage uh, people to be as brief as possible and as fo focused as possible with so many people still in line. Thank you. Uh, Vincent? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Vincent Stanton, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 3. I strongly support the Northland Zone 3 proposal and, and plan to vote to ensure its success. But at the same time, I don't want the town to unilaterally cede a key negotiating chip in the upcoming negotiations with McLean concerning Zone 4. If, this art, if we were simply being asked to... Uh, uh, amend the uh, TMMA for Zone 3, we, we would be done. This would have passed uh, over 99% plus. Kathy Cohane asked town council whether the selectmen have the authority to unilaterally grant uh, Northland relief, and he indicated that uh, they could only grant temporary relief, and that could be changed by a, a future uh, select board vote. So if I may, Mr. Moderator, two questions for uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall, yeah. First, what would be the procedure uh, to to grant um, a permanent relief? And, and if I could just preface that by pointing out, the Zone 3 is subject to the TMMA because in 1999, it was expected to be an assisted living facility. Zones 1A, 1B, and 2 which are all residential and which are all completely built out now, were not subject to the TMMA. In in the event, of course, that the um, the the city living facility was, was not built, and now we have a purely residential uh, development before us zone, for Zone Three. So, in effect, Zone Three has become indistinguishable. It's in the same category as One uh, A, One B, and Two which are not subject to the, so I, I guess my view would be that the town uh, unilaterally suspending enforcement against residential development on the McLean parcel would be the, the, a, a, a direction in, along those lines is, is what I am uh, have in mind. And could could that be Mr. done permanently without a town meeting vote or does that, would that require a town meeting vote? Thank you, Mr. Hall. George Hall, Town Council. I mean, Vince, the, the key part of this is that any agreement in any form that the town could reach with Mr. Dolly uh, has to be satisfactory to, to um, or, or you know, re remove the risk 
of these um, fairly draconian recourse actions uh, to the satisfaction of his lenders and his equity investors. And at, at any kind of just temporary agreement that's not binding on a future board that doesn't survive the next election is not going to satisfy those investors. The only kind of agreement that will satisfy the investors is one that's approved by town meeting that actually releases these obligations in the agreement. And the agreement can't be amended without town meeting approval. It also can't be amended without approval because it's an agreement with all of the parties to it. And so we had to negotiate uh, under the time constraints that we're facing uh, an agreement that was satisfactory to all parties. And as I said before, we did our best to um, arrive at an agreement that we believed was in, in the town's best interests. But it, this is not a situation where this just as, as was suggested earlier, where the select board without a town meeting vote can make the problem of financing the zone three development just go away. There has to be a, a, a permanent and binding solution that, um, that removes that risks, risk from the zone three project. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sand, did you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I know, and I'll try to ask you quickly. I believe Mr. Uh, Epstein suggested that in the four, they'll have another crack at the nut, including the potential for revisiting traffic mitigation measures pertaining to zone four. If I were McLean, I would point to the, the existing 1999 TMMA and say, not so. So my question for Mr. Hall is, uh, do, will the planning board have another crack at uh, zone four when they, including in traffic mitigation measures when they review it? Or is is did, did we already conclude that? Mr. Hall? Uh, George Hall, Town Council. The, the TMMA does not supersede zoning requirements. It, it, it is in addition to zoning requirements. So amending the, the TMMA to remove anything does not relax or you know, pre prevent the enforcement of the normal zoning rules. Um, the way that traffic is addressed in every other development throughout the town um, now, you know, there are certain uses that are permitted, and so there's there's not um, kind of an infinite number of options that a planning board has, but the planning board, uh, I believe, under the current zoning here, can impose sort of reasonable conditions on the development to try to mitigate or manage uh, peak traffic demand. Um, that would be within the scope of what uh, the planning board could do under under a design and site plan review for a project in zone four. Ada Baptista. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Ada Baptista, are you next, I believe? And then we'll take a recess. Hi. Is, thanks, Mike. Ada Baptista, Tom, meeting member, Precinct 3. Uh, rise to move the question, please. Mr. Baptista has uh, moved to uh, terminate debate. So we will take another motion on terminating debate. Uh, Ellen, how many people are in line? Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman, there are 14 people with their hands up. Okay, great. So um, those favoring uh, termination debate, debate, vote yes, oppose no. Few more seconds here.
Okay, let's uh, show the tally. Yeah, no, but I'm showing that you can show the tally. No, can't do that. Well, I guess we're going to wait on the emergency votes <laughs> and then show the tally. Still waiting on one more emergency vote. Here it comes. Thank you for your patience. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, um, town clerk with emergency votes from Mary Kennedy and Ann Jansen, both vote yes to terminate debate on the amendment. All right, can we show the tally? Um, so it's 154 in favor, 64 opposed, three abstention. Clearly more than two thirds, so debate is terminated on the uh, Eckert Amendment. So now we are voting on Ms. Eckert's amendment. If this prevails, that will end action this evening and uh, special town meeting. If it um, fails, we'll then go to a uh, any further discussion, though I hope it would be limited since uh, it's essentially the opposite of the uh, Eckert Amendment uh, to a vote on the main motion. So with that, we are now voting on Yolanda Eckert's amendment to uh, effectively indefinite postponement. So if you favor her amendment, vote yes. If you oppose it, vote no. This is a vote on the amendment, not the main motion. Again, thank for your patience. We're waiting for a couple of emergency votes, and we'll show a tally. I'll start.
be set. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman again, this time with emergency votes on the amendment by Ms. Eggert. We have Ann Jansen who voted. Tally is 40 in favor, 179 opposed, six abstention. So now we turn to, with the defeat of the amendment, we turn to the main motion, which as I've said, and it's clear, is the obverse of the uh, vote you just took. So we can have more discussion or we can go to a vote on the main motion. I guess the issue, if you get in line if you would like more discussion. Mr. Moderator, Please. Ellen O'Brien Cushman, at this point, there are four people with their hands in the air. Um, actually, it's growing as we speak. And we have Ada Batista, who already called the question on the um, amendment. But since we are now discussing the main motion, he would be eligible. Suzanne Robotham and Chris Doyle. Uh, Mr. Mr. Baptista. Thanks, Mr. Moderator. Adam Batista, Tommy, a member of Precinct 3. I respectfully ask everyone and moderator to move the question. Is there a second? Yes. Yes, there is. So, um, Mr. Since this is a separate uh, motion, Mr. Baptista was allowed to speak again. So now this would terminate debate on the main motion. We voted before to terminate debate on the Eckert Amendment. This would terminate debate on the main motion. If you favor, vote yes. Opposed, no. And of course, it takes two thirds. Point of information while you're voting, they, we've had a couple of votes where emergency votes came in after I declared the final total, but uh, uh, I've decided that uh, they are legitimate votes, so they will be added to the final totals, though they won't obviously change any outcome. Someone has raised the question of scrolling, and uh, it's a good point. We neglected to scroll to show the uh, earlier votes. We will scroll on this motion to terminate debate, and we'll scroll on the main motion when we reach it. And they're all available at, on the uh, town clerk's website tomorrow morning.
Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman again, town clerk. I have two emergency votes for terminating debate on the main motion. Um, one from Ira Morgenstern, yes, and Ted Dukas, yes. So those two uh, bring the total to 159. In favor, 57 opposed, four abstention. Clearly well more than two thirds. So debate is terminated. Uh, let's scroll the votes. And then momentarily we'll go to a vote on the main motion. Scroll that and that will end the special town meeting. While we're scrolling, I want to thank everybody, all the people who have contributed to pulling this meeting off as smoothly as it's gone. It's been a huge amount of work, so thank you all. All right, thank you, James. Uh, again, the final vote, 159 in favor, 57 opposed for abstention. So uh, with that, we now go to the vote on the main motion. So you're voting here on the motion that Mr. Epstein read at the beginning of the meeting to uh, in, in favor or not of the revised traffic management agreement voted by the select between the select board and McLean. If you support the motion, yes, oppose, no. So again, we're waiting for the emergency votes. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, again, town clerk. We have two emergency votes. Ted Dukas on the main motion votes yes. Ira Morgan Stern on the main motion votes no. So we'll show the tally. So with that, it's 191 in favor, 25 opposed, five abstention. So obviously it's approved. Uh, let's scroll and then we'll, uh, I'll take unanimous consent on a motion to dissolve town meeting. <laughs> and again, thank you all for all the work put into this and thank you town meeting members for a thoughtful discussion. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, we have one more emergency vote, I believe, Ellen. Yes, we do, Ellen O'Brien. Cushman, town clerk, we have a late-breaking one from Mary okay. Kennedy um, voting yes on the main motion. So I believe the final total with the three emergency votes is 192 in favor, 25 opposed, and five abstention. So that's uh, the official final vote for the record. And with that, we'll turn to the... Motion moved that the June 26, 2024 special town meeting be dissolved. Take unanimous consent for that. Thank you all very much. And we'll see you at a special town meeting. I think November 16 is the tentative date. 16 and 18. Two nights.